Greetings. Welcome to this webinar. Today we're talking about assistive technology and how we might make use of assistive technology as part of our dyslexia services plan. I'm Denise Gibbs and I'm happy to be sharing information with you today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, please use the email address that you see on this first slide. This webinar has been designed to provide you with professional development that is consistent with the requirements for professional development in the Alabama Administrative Code Dyslexia Amendments. In the Dyslexia Amendments, there's a section that talks about the services that need to be provided to students following the screening results that we've obtained. You can see that one of the things that we need to consider is whether or not the student needs access to assistive technology. For many students, it is the access to assistive technology that will give them access to grade level content. Without that assistive technology, this student may be reading in such a way that they could never be able to get the information included in their textbooks or in novels that would be being read by students in their grade or any other kind of print material. So we want to make sure that for students who fail our dyslexia screening and who are reading one or two or three levels below the grade level that they're assigned to, that they can have access to print materials that other students in the grade will be using to be able to learn content information. We'll also talk about how this assistive technology can be used to facilitate their writings in the grade level content areas. We're going to talk about two different ways that assistive technology can be used. It can be used for reading purposes or for writing purposes. If we're using technology for reading, we'll be using the text to speech feature. We'll let technology show us the text on the screen, highlight the words, and read it out loud to us. If we're using it for writing, we'll be able to actually speak into the device and our words will magically almost turn into text. I can remember being a graduate student many years ago and just wishing that rather than have to type the words and spell the words, that I in fact could just speak into the computer or the, the typewriter and it would turn those words into text. With technology today, we'll be able to do almost that. I want to mention three different kinds of reading that Ben Foss talks about in his book, The Dyslexia Empowerment Plan. He talks about eye reading, which we typically think of as reading, where we look at the book, read the words with our eyes, and we're done with it. Then we, he talks about finger reading, which is Braille, which people with dis, with uh, blindness are able to use their fingers to feel Braille on a page and read books. Then we know about audiobooks where we can listen to a book on tape. There's a fourth kind that combines features of both eye reading and ear reading and we get to see the the print on the screen of our device while the device highlights the words and reads them out loud to us. Kind of a multi-sensory eye and ear reading. We need technology to help us overcome various challenges presented by our characteristics of dyslexia. We can use technology to read textbooks, to read information included on various internet research uh, sites that we're using, to be able to take notes and organize our information. Sometimes students who have characteristics of dyslexia are very distracted by non-text items on the screen. Sometimes we might find technology that can allow us to simplify the text that's on the screen, getting rid of some of those non-text items. Oftentimes technology can be used to facilitate our growth in vocabulary in various kinds of ways that we'll see today in this webinar. Also, we can use technology to read tests aloud to students and for students to be able to give answers on those tests in spaces provided. We can also think about how we might use technology to take an otherwise not digital version of information, just a printed worksheet, and capture that worksheet through our smartphone, use technology to convert that uh, image to a readable PDF or Acrobat Reader file and then be able to 
um, have that worksheet read aloud to us. We can use technology to be able to capture the wonderful thoughts and ideas that we have and uh, capture those in written work without having to worry about being able to spell the words that um, capture those ideas. We're going to talk about two kinds of technology today. We're going to talk about Bookshare and we're going to talk about uh, Read and Write for Google Chrome. We'll also mention a few things about other types of technology that uh, is available for things like iPads. Let's get started with looking at Bookshare. Bookshare is free for schools. It allows us to um, have access to virtually every textbook that we might use in our district and have those textbooks available for students on their device so that the device can uh, read the textbooks out loud to students. Let's look at how Bookshare works. We're going to go to the Bookshare website and you see it's bookshare.org and I already have it actually open. I have a uh, an account for Bookshare uh, set up for Scottish Rite and as the administrator I have my administrative login. It's at this point that I'm able to set students up in Bookshare, to set other teachers in our um, system up in Bookshare, create um, shared reading lists for different grade levels and so forth. We may come back to some of the administrative functions in a minute, but first I want to show you what Bookshare looks like in terms of students. All right, we're going to um, go to our student login. So I'll log out of that one and log back in. I'll log in to a student who I've got set up. And you can see we've got Mr. Cameron here. Um, when you look at Cameron, who is just my example student for the purposes of training, um, Cameron can go, this is the, the view of Bookshare that he would have when he logs in. He can see his recent books, the things he's been reading. He can go to any assigned books from reading uh, lists and do a few other fu uh, functions within um, Bookshare. Kind of an important thing that everybody needs to understand about Bookshare, if we set a student up for a school-based Bookshare account, um, then the student will also be able to have a personal account in Bookshare that's linked to um, his school account. And that's kind of handy because then if the student moves or graduates, goes on to college, whatever, they'll still have their Bookshare account available. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different reading lists that um, Cameron has access to and you can see that in his reading list he's got his fourth grade text and he's also got favorites. Um, I'm going to go to his favorites reading list and here you see the books that are on his favorites. He's got Boxcar Children, he's got Brian's Hunt. We're going to go and we'll read Brian's Hunt. So we'll open Brian's Hunt and here we have Brian's Hunt. And I can go to the table of contents. Interestingly, it will pick right up at the last place that um, Cameron was reading. And this can be really handy and save a lot of time. So we're going to just let you get a listen to what um, Bookshare sounds like. It was done in 10 minutes and he stripped the meat off the side, still steaming into an aluminum pot from his cook set and turned the fish over to cook the other side while he ate the first. He had salt but was favoring it less and less. He ate the meat with his fingers, picking carefully through the bones, including the notorious white ash bones dash dash until nothing was left. But bones and by that time the second half was done. He ate the meat from that, then broke the head open and ate the brain and eyes. He had long ago stopped being picky or squeamish, put the bones and carcass back in. So you see what was happening. The um, sentence is highlighted in gray and then each word is being highlighted as it is read. I can change pages by using the navigation bar to just go from page to page. I've got a lot of things I can do up here. I can make it fill up the screen 
which I probably should have done in the beginning. And I can now see without all the distractions at the top. You can also go to the little settings uh, gear and you can change the look. We're doing black print on a white background. We could change to white print um, on a black background or to a um, maybe a little more soothing um, a tan kind of uh, uh, print on a, a yellow background. I'm looking at it with facing pages so that it looks like a book. I also have the opportunity for single pages to be displayed. I can make it fill up my screen or I can have kind of a frame or some margins around the edge. Importantly, I can speed the rate up or slow the rate down and it's we want it our students to understand that they can do that so that they can determine their most comfortable listening level and comfortable listening level will vary depending on your familiarity with the information your purpose for reading um, if you're reading and if the students reading a novel like in this case the Brian saga and we're doing Brian's hunt which I think is the last book in that series um, if you're doing something that you have great background knowledge and familiarity for and you're really motivated and interested, you can listen probably at a lot faster pace than if it's something like, say, your history book or your science book where you're really trying to learn content and it's not necessarily an area where you have as much background knowledge and I hate to say motivation but in any case our listening for textbooks might need to be at a little bit different rate than we might have for a novel that we're listening to so we can change the features oh and I can also change as you can see the font size so that I can have larger print or smaller print even down to a 12 point font and so we'll save that and I'll show you what it looks like now we're in single page display and I'm going to change to a different chapter. We'll go on to maybe chapter seven. It creates chapter seven for us. Let's listen to it. Read chapter seven. Brian boiled Lake Mud and packed it, still wet but not hot on the wound. Much of it fell off. Might be too slow, so I'm going to speed it up a bit. We'll speed it up quite a bit. It's a very sensitive little slider. And now we'll listen to it read. Brian But some stayed and seemed to help, and while he was doing it, he thought of a better solution. He would get spruce and pine gum from tree sap, where it formed on the trunks and melted and put that over the wound. So you get the idea of some of the things that you have access to as you're listening to text. Now let's go back. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, point out a few features. We are reading, uh, we're using Bookshare with Bookshare Web Reader. Um, I am doing this webinar on my MacBook and I am using Google Chrome and uh, Bookshare Web Reader is the um, desired um, tool for using if you're using Google Chrome uh, on any kind of device. All right, so I'm still logged in as the student and I just want you to see a few things about how the student can search for books um, so we'll do a quick search. I hope we'll do a quick search. There we go. And I can type in either the um, author that I'm looking for. And so we'll just pretend that our student really likes Paulson, has just been doing the Brian um, saga, and so can pull up Gary Paulson and um, see some other things. So the student might say, well, I think I'd like to do road trip and so can add road trip to a reading list. So when you clicked on add to reading list, Cameron has several lists. He has fourth grade and he also that the teacher has assigned. I'm sorry, he has fourth grade that he created and also favorites. And so he'll add that to favorites. So that has now been added to his reading list. All right. I could have just read from right there, but I can also go back to home and my bookshare and then go to my reading lists 
and we will hopefully have in my favorites you can see road trip they're in alphabetical order you can see road trip and there it is and I can read it now so it'll take a minute to create the book for you especially since it's the first time you will have read this book and you'll then see road trip materialize on your screen I have found that um, Bookshare um, is such a valuable resource for schools um, to have access to not only our textbooks but also to have access to uh, any number of um, trade books or pleasure books or novels or um, whatever you're talking about. Um, the, the depth of availability of materials is just phenomenal. Um, now if you do type in an ISBN number or a title that they don't have there is a process that you can go through very simple and quick for them to then create that book for you so for example if you had one of your textbooks that you needed and it wasn't there you'd be able to um, have them create it so um, this is taking a little longer than normal and it may have something to do with the internet um, bandwidth that I have available right now I'm going to uh, not take time to wait for it uh, just know that uh, in the space of and it says a minute or two but I think it feels to me like we've been there at least a minute or two I'm going to click in um, to my um, administrator account for just a second and show you how to create a um, reading list so I'll log in and I want to log in as me. I think I do. All right. So we'll log in as Denise Gibbs. Sign in. So I'm back as administrator Denise. And so um, I'd like to create a reading list. There you see the different things that um, I've got I'm going to manage my reading list maybe and I'll be able to then go there and create a reading list so when I'm creating a reading list I just give it a title and so maybe this is my school district whatever it is so it might say and this would be um, grade 5 textbooks so I can describe it for um, the purpose of if I'm sharing this with other people and this will be textbooks that we have um, elected textbooks for students something like that and then save it now I have a nice little reading list that at this point has no books in it um, you see that I've got my list of students and I can elect who I'm going to assign this to. There are bunches of places that I can do that. Um, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some titles to my reading list. So we're going to um, add books to the reading list that's called fifth grade. And here is where I can type in either the author or whoever. I've obviously been doing Gary Paulson a lot lately and I'll ask it to find books by Paulson so maybe I want field trip to be added to my list this is kind of a nice feature because I can um, do multiple books at the same time so we'll just take all of those and um, we'll assign those books okay so now we've created those in within that um, reading list okay so Bookshare is very user-friendly we're able to um, uh, we're able to do a number of different tasks both as administrators interestingly if I was logged in as a student students can create their own reading lists as well which I have found to be something that a lot of students do quite well all right so we're going to go back briefly to our PowerPoint and 
we're going to, just for a second, I want to mention that many of you may be still um, using iPads and haven't made the great Chrome shift um, that seems to be happening in a lot of schools. If you are using iPads, and I will tell you that much, I would say the, the first five or six years that I talked about technology for dyslexia, it was all about iPads. So I have quite a, uh, a a depth of uh, information about how we use iPads as technology. Um, and um, if you d are using iPads, some of the apps that you'll find to be very helpful um, include um, for text to speech. I've found Voice Dream Reader to be very helpful. It allows me to put um, text on my um, screen of my iPad and then have the um, voice dream reader read it out loud. If I want to dictate or do speech to text, uh, Dragon Dictation is my favorite one of those. Um, for note taking, I've found Evernote to be very user friendly and I use Poplet a lot for the purpose of creating outlines and organizational um, images to help you um, keep things going when you're trying to do some writing. As I've um, moved about our state uh, over the last year, I've found that um, there seems to be a revolution going on uh, where a lot of districts are beginning to use uh, Google and Google Chrome and Chromebooks and what have you. The nice thing about the Google apps that we're going to be talking about is that they work cross-platform. So they work whether you're using um, a Mac or whether you're using a PC or whether you're using a Chromebook. So um, because they are cross-platform and the things that we use are more tied to the student's Google account than they are to any particular device that the student might be using. They come in really handy. Um, we're going to be talking now about Read and Write for Google Chrome, which is absolutely free. Uh, the premium version is free for teachers, and the, there's a free version with a little fewer bells and whistles that's also free for students. Um, you're able to um, uh, contract with um, text help if you want to purchase the premium version for your students and you can get in touch with them if you want to go in that direction. So I'd like for us to talk about um, read and write for Google Chrome that will allow us to read Google Docs, PDFs, EPUBs, emails, and websites and we can use it for writing. Um, I had the privilege of doing a webinar um, several months ago for text help and the title of it is necessary for some beneficial for all and in it we talk about um, literacy supports using read and write and how this really can serve dyslexic students so well so um, I it's available at the text help website and you can follow the link in your um, handout if um, you'd like to um, see that particular webinar. All right, so let's play with read and write for Google Chrome for just a few minutes. So I'm going to first start with a Google Doc and we'll just open a blank doc and see if we can have some fun this morning. So while the doc is opening, um, many of you are very familiar with Google Docs probably much more so than I. I've only been using uh, the Google uh, Chrome and all these uh, pieces of technology for about a year now. All right, so you see this little puzzle piece that popped down and it's got an RW on it. That's the signal that read and write is ready to play in Google Docs. So I can touch the puzzle piece and my toolbar pops down. I can touch it again and it pops back up. I'm going to start by titling my document. This one is going to be play because we're just going to be playing this morning and I will bring down read and write uh, toolbar. So with the read and write toolbar each one of these little buttons um, serves a different purpose. This one lets us use word prediction while we're typing in Google Docs. It also can access, this button can access a dictionary or if you like a picture dictionary. This will 
if I push play, it would read any of the text that's on the document. I can then pause and then come right back by doing play again, or I can stop and then it'll t make me go back to um, the beginning of the document or to another place that I choose. Um, I can do speech input to write the document uh, using the toolbar here uh, for read and write, or I can use these various highlighting tools after I create my document, and I can do that in lots of ways. If I want to create a vocabulary um, sheet uh, reference that goes um, for words that are in this document, I can do that. I can also do a voice note, which can be quite fun and, and beneficial in lots of ways that we'll explore in a few minutes. All right, so let's start. But before I do show you the speech input, which I could do by simply clicking. Um, I just turn the microphone off and I'll take it away. I'll do speech input again. When I'm using speech input, it allows me to write anything that I can say, period. However, if I don't use punctuation by telling it where to put commas and periods, it will create a document with very little punctuation other than it will give me periods at the ends of sentences. Period. You can see that it got a little confused with the pauses that I put in the document. So I'm just showing you how well this writes what I'm saying, period. Now I'm going to show you how I might be able to use punctuation, period. New paragraph. When I use voice typing, comma, I no longer have to be confined to just words that I can spell, exclamation. Oops, wish it had given me an exclamation point, but I think I might have to say exclamation point. Yes, that would be the command for getting an exclamation point. And anytime I say exclamation point, obviously I'll get one. I might be able to ask questions, new paragraph. Who do you think would benefit from using this tool, question mark? I think just about anybody could benefit from using this tool, exclamation point. So that was a little bit more fun than I meant to have. Let's go down and now listen to it read for a few minutes. And I will put the cursor where I'd like to hear it read, and we'll let it read. Who do you think would benefit from using this tool? I think just about anybody could benefit from using this tool. All right. So you're listening to it read, and you might be noticing certain things about the voice. And I have some control over the voice. If I come over here to the little gear that is the settings, I can touch that, and you can see that I have it. I have or previously selected the Tom, who has a U.S. Uh, voice, and I also have Samantha, and I have Ava. Those are um, some of my U.S. or American-sounding voices. I can have British-sounding accented voices. I can have any number of different types of accents. Um, I. Um, particularly enjoy playing uh, with the some of the different ones. We'll do Australian. We'll slow him down just a bit. The speed that I had was fast. I'm slowing it to medium. You also notice that I have continuous reading clicked. If I unclick continuous reading, then it will stop after each sentence. But we'll click continuous reading and we'll listen to our little Australian voice just a bit. So put the cursor where we want it to read, and ask it to read. When I use voice typing, comma, I no longer have to be confined to just words that I can spell exclamation oops we should have given me in. But I think I might have to say. 
So you see how the different the different accent um, sounds. Now you might know that, um, and I'm going to come down and be in a new place to start. You might know that in Google Docs itself, um, sometime I think maybe last fall, um, they started having a feature which is voice typing. And interestingly, voice typing. I'm going to close the one from within. Um, read and write, but voice typing does the same thing. Um, very same voice, um, everything. All the rules are the same. In fact, read and write for Google Chrome uses Google Docs voice uh, features and voice input features. Um, previously, before Google Docs started having voice typing, you had to rely on read and write's input. Now you can do either way. When I am using the voice input with read and write for Google Chrome, comma, I am using the same voice that also is included in voice typing, which is part of Google Docs, period. Remember to turn the microphone off or it will now also listen to everything you said and write that. But there you see that we have that, but no way to necessarily read it without popping down read and write for Google Chrome. When I am using the voice input with read and write for Google Chrome, I am using the same voice that also is included in voice typing. So you see how that works. I'm going to go back to one of our more traditional, I guess you'd say, maybe um, U.S. voices, and I always seem to default to Tom. Okay, so now we'll listen to Tom uh, when we go to the next thing. All right, so that was um, a little demonstration for you of how Read and Write works with Google Docs. I also want to show you how Read and Write will work if we are doing something from the Internet. So I'm going to go to a new tab. And I'm going to do a voice search, and we're going to ask for um, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. According to Wikipedia, Thomas Jefferson was an American founding father and the principal author of the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so we'll go to Thomas Jefferson. I could have used read and write, by the way, to have it read each one of those um, little descriptions from my search, and I would have done that, I'm sure, if I were a child who was print challenged. I'm going to turn on the, I clicked the little puzzle piece up here um, in all my extensions with Google Chrome, and it looks like I've kind of collected quite a few. Um, but here is the toolbar, and if I want it to do things for me, I would just click the thing that I'm interested in. And so I want to be able to see the print just a little bit. So I'm going to come down, and we'll start reading down here about him being freckled and sandy-haired, whatever. So we'll click that, and then we'll ask it to start reading. Freckled and sandy-haired, rather tall and awkward. Jefferson was eloquent as a correspondent, but he was no public speaker. In the Virginia House of Burgesses in the Continental Congress, he contributed his pen rather than his voice to the Patriot cause. So I'm going to turn um, hover speech, which is what that button is. It allows me to hover over any bit of text and then uh, listen to it. Um, I'm going to change over here from medium to fast. And I'm going to leave it at continuous, and we'll say OK. So we'll listen to it now, that same text, in fast mode with hover speech. Freckled and sandy-haired, rather tall and awkward, Jefferson was eloquent as a correspondent, but he was no public speaker. So you see the difference in this, this, the rate. Um, all right, I want to show a few other features while we're here. And you might have um, assigned this as an article that your student needed to uh, review. Um, if 
you're collecting information about patriots or whatever. And there may be certain vocabulary things that you are interested in as well um, as part of your study. So you've, you've put them on to a scavenger hunt um, of such for vocabulary. And liberty was one of the words. So we're going to highlight the word liberty. And so the student is looking for these words. So they wanted liberty and maybe they needed to look up awkward. I'm just kind of randomly picking words now. Um, and I'm uh, because I really just want to show you how the vocabulary feature works. Um, we'll do the word religious. And so now I've got those. Now, if I come to vocabulary right here, it will create a vocabulary page with the words that I've highlighted. And as I highlight more words, um, they'll get added to the vocabulary page, which is a really handy feature. So it's creating that vocabulary page for us. And it comes in as a new Google Doc. You recognize the toolbar at the top. And it is looking to see if there are pictures that would depict. So here's Liberty and you see the bird escaping and awkward. No picture there, but it does have um, a symbol for religious. All right. And then you see the various definitions. So if your student needed to then read these, you can see that they can listen to it being read. All right, and so that might be the definition that your student needed to, to capture. And so they have the ability to take this. Ooh, too many, too many. I guess I'll use the click shift. Click and click shift and delete the parts of it that you don't want them to have because it, just find the definition that best goes with what we're doing. So now they've got it. And maybe you want them to then put the definition in their own words and um, or make a sentence with it that relates to the um, information that you're studying. And so they can do it either by speaking the sentence in. Liberty is what the patriots were fighting for, period. So I can input my sentence that way or and then, of course, I can have it read back to me to be sure that, in fact, the computer played fair and wrote what I said. Liberty is what the patriots were fighting for. OK, not great grammar, but something your kids might really write, I guess. All right. The other way that I think is kind of fun and I would like to think we might start giving students feedback this way is to do a voice note. So the student could either put their summary of what the word means or whatever, or um, you could put feedback to them. So we'll do it as if the teacher is giving the student feedback with this. So we'll use voice note. Denise, you did a really good job with this definition. I think you're enjoying this study. So then we can listen to it. Denise, you did a really good job with this definition. I think you're enjoying this study. Something like that. If you're satisfied with your voice note, you can insert it. You'll see the little colored uh, rainbow-like um, bar going across as it's formulating your um, voice note. It will attach it here as a comment, and the student can then play it and hear your feedback which for students who have characteristics of dyslexia is a great way to give them feedback because they don't have to just see a lot of words on the page that they might not be able to read and wonder if your words are positive or negative. So anyway, um, since the internet's being a little on the slow side, I'll just let you know that it really would have uh, inserted itself there if I had been patient enough to wait. All right, so we'll do that. and. All right, so what else do I need to show you about read and write? You get the idea about using the highlighting tools to create any number of things. Let me just show you how I might use those same highlighting tools.
go back to this and just um, create a, um, we'll clean the highlighting away. Yes, take it away. Now, if I had listened to this several times and now was ready to go back and take some notes and maybe we wanted to do some of the um, interesting facts or characteristics about Thomas Jefferson, then I might be able to um, take some notes. And so we'll get our little highlighter tool. So these are going to be characteristics. He was freckled and sandy haired. That's one fact. So I'm going to highlight that. Another fact is that he was rather tall and awkward. So that I want to show up as a separate fact about Thomas Jefferson. I didn't know that he was tall and awkward. That's an interesting thing to know. He was eloquent as a correspondent. Might need to look up what that means, but I think it means he was better with his pen than he was with his spoken words. Um, no public speaker. So that that's, must be what that meant. So I've got some interesting little facts about Thomas Jefferson that I've collected there. And so I can now ask it to collect my highlights. And so this is like taking notes from this internet article. So we'll say, okay. So it's collecting my notes, creates a Google Doc that at this point is undefined, but I can define it. And what I'm going to say is this is Jefferson, whoops, Jefferson, characteristics, something like that. Obviously needed to use voice typing for this. Jefferson characteristics. Okay, so you see what it did is it brought in those facts, gave me the reference to the article, and then said, who it was that collected this. Then you can have the student take their little note page and they can, you can have them say the date maybe that it was collected. So it was collected August, whatever today is, um, the 20th, let's just say. And so um, if you want them to get rid of the highlight, they can do that. Um, ring down the toolbar, get rid of the highlighting, um, you do have to click and drag over what highlighting you want to get rid of. And the highlighting is now gone, and now it's just like a nice little note. So anyway, that's how you can use Read and Write to take notes. Many, many other features of Read and Write for Google Chrome, and they're all um, depicted in that 90-minute webinar um, that uh, you'll find at the Text Help website. So one other feature that I'd like to share with you um, about Read and Write for Google Chrome has to do with its um, ability to do um, PDF files. So I'm going to my Google Drive and I have way too many folders as you can see, but I'm going to go to mine that I have some stored worksheets. These might be worksheets that I have taken a picture of with my smartphone, used a tool called Snapverter, um, which you can read about at the uh, read at the text help website. Um, but I took a picture of a document, sent it through my smartphone to Snapverter, which then converted it into a readable uh, PDF file. So we'll pull up the one, I guess, on the Supreme Court and read and write is now opening it. I have read and write set as the default um, reader, if you will, for my PDF files. You're seeing the toolbar waking up. All these will be accessible to me as I read this PDF file. All right, usually I have done a demonstration with this, and in fact I have, so I'm going to take the answers away because I want you to have the joy of seeing us create that answer. So here is the worksheet, and we're talking about the Supreme Court. If I'd like it to read the um, worksheet for me, it will certainly do it. The Supreme Court of the United States is the highest court in the country. It is the final court in all federal court cases and all state court cases that involve federal issues. The Supreme Court was established in Article III of the Constitution. Okay, so you see it's reading the article to me. Um, I can have it just read the whole article 
and of just a piece like we were doing there or I can just pick out a certain part that I need it to read. Let's go down here to the questions. Maybe I need it to read just this question for me. You know, I would do well if I would remember to do click, shift, and it would get just what I want it to read. So it'll read that. All right, so we'll stop it, and then I'm going to write my answer in the box. I get a nice big text box that I can type into if I want to, or I can speak into it. Allow your microphone. Checks and balances are needed so that one branch of the government doesn't run over the other branches of the government. Turn the microphone off. Let's see what it says. I can do the little speaker. Checks and balances are needed so that one branch of the government doesn't run over the other branches of the government. So I like that. So I can say keep it and it takes that, I can resize the text box and I'm good to go. Notice that I've got a number of different features that I can do where I can change um, things like the rate at which it's reading just like I did with the other features and interestingly I can also print from this page if you have the students set up to print. You can print by saving it as a PDF file and putting your name on it and that's a great way for us to exchange um, information back and forth um, so I don't want it to print to my printer instead what I want it to do is I want it to save it as a PDF file so or I can have it saved to Google Drive any number of different features that I can um, have it do so if I tell it to save it as a PDF file gives me the opportunity to give it a name and I'm going to say Denise because that's who's going to turn this in so notice where it saved it just to my desktop and so now I've got my um, saved uh, PDF file that now has my information in it a very uh, valuable tool as we're working with students who failed our dyslexia screening okay I think those were the main features I wanted to share with you today um, uh, from the um, Read and Write for Google Chrome. The only thing left is I'd like to walk you through the process or at least tell you the process of how to get your own free account. You'll go to, um, if you, you need to be logged in uh, to your Google account using the Chrome browser, go to the Chrome web store and do a search for Read and Write for Google Chrome. Um, then click on that and ask it to add it to your um, Chrome and um, I'm going to show you this next where it says click the link uh, to go to their website to get your free teacher account. So just to be sure that you leave here able to do this today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take us to the Chrome Web Store. So we go to the Chrome Web Store and we type in read and write. So we type that in and it will find read and write. So there it is. I've already added it. Yours will say add to Chrome. So click add to Chrome. And when you add to Chrome, it'll give ask for your permission to really do that. And you'll say yes. Then after it's added and now you have this little green banner that says added, you're going to click on read and write. And this is what pops up, the description. Over here on the right side of your screen, you'll see website. Click that. And voila, read and write for Google Chrome is free for teachers. So click on free for teachers. And you'll slide down. You'll be required to put in your first name, your last name, and your job title, teacher, administrator, whatever you are. And then the name of your school district and your school email address. 
your country, your state, and then down here, the name of a district or school administrator who could verify, if need be, that you are in fact an employee of that district, a teacher there, and then their email address. So this would usually be your principal and maybe your principal's email address. So then you click send and it says welcome aboard, and now you have your free premium version of Read and Write for Google Chrome. Notice that your students can have 30 days of free membership uh, for the premium version of Read and Write for Google Chrome, and then their membership will um, revert to the not premium version or the basic version. And the basic version doesn't have some of the bells and whistles that you saw on the premium version. So, I think those are some of the main things that I wanted to cover with you today about how we might use two important assistive technology tools, Read and Write for Google Chrome and Bookshare, to um, help meet the needs of students who have characteristics of dyslexia. I want to thank you for your participation in this webinar today, and I want to encourage you to look at the State Department's website for additional uh, information about how to go about the business of implementing your dyslexia services. Thanks, and have a great day.